just energy transition, the prospects and challenges for the African economy. For the African economy. And so what um, I did was to quickly look at um, uh, the African economy and then energy transition and then why the continent is asking for just energy transition. So briefly, uh, this is what um, I have for very brief. As I'll run through it very quickly. Um, major global situation impacts on global economies, uh, brief on African economy, energy transition, just energy transition, natural gas as a transition fuel. I saw someone asking, why do we want to use natural gas? Uh, impacts on climate change in Africa, prospects for the African continent. Uh, briefly, I just did this to show us the things that are presently impacting the world. Uh, there are, I, I won't call it potentials of a third world war, you know, but I hope they are able to arrest it. The Russian Ukrainian war, COVID is being uh, subdued, but still playing significant roles, um, slowing down Chinese economy and others. Of course, the weakening uh, globalization friendliness is, is dwindling. Uh, we are going back to more like a Cold War partitioning and protectionism. A uh, looming global economic recession, everybody is watching. The US uh, federal rates are spiking challenges in UK and then of course climate change and energy transition which is where we are all of these put together the pressure and the decisions and the way forward. A uh, brief on uh, African economy. Um, this is Africa. I like to put this to quickly address Africa. You can see we have almost how many countries feeded into Africa but if you look at the global map Africa is so small but um, this is the second largest continent um 30 000 square kilometer it, it swallowed usa china india everybody that is everybody is fitted into africa and then but unfortunately uh you will see the why now you can see what population apart from the asian continent where you have india and china africa is still um, africa is apparently europe and latin america if you add north america and all that so africa is is sizable but you know, um, another beautiful picture I quickly had is that this is population of 60 and older in the world 2020. Africa is a young continent. You can see just 5.6% of African population is above 60 years. So apparently um, there's a lot of labor workforce that can transform this continent. Um, but I can see median age. These are all influenced. But the sad part is that um, I'm not sure Africa is ready because it's going to balloon in population. Uh, by 2050, it's uh, projected about 2.5 billion uh, from the 1.3. And by 20, the end of the century, Africa will be 4.2 billion. Um, our beloved country, Nigeria, will be number two at 790 million, overtaking China at 730, just coming second after India at 1 billion. So a lot of pressure on the continent and why just then here, I quickly showed the, the mineral base of Africa. I mean, you see abundance of human and natural resources, good sunshine, bad last night, sandwich, fit ocean, and you have all this, but yet I'll show you something. Now, these are resource, you know, oil and gas resource, and you see natural gas. Uh, what is proved can sustain Africa for more than 100 years, coal and oil. And then the prospects can be almost like endless endless and you have the mineral deposits all across the continent africa as at uh, 2021 is only dealing pro providing 5.5 percent these are some of the challenges uh these are proved uh, oil um in economic wise i'm not going to bore you but by 2020 africa debt is almost a trillion and then um, of course growth is you know going to be subdued with all the crisis um rising food and energy prices um of course um about 20 14 countries already including our beloved country nigeria ghana and all that are already under high debt risk so a lot of things uh, debt projection is elevated at 59 more than uh, one in five people in africa suffer from hunger an estimated 140 million people acute food insecurity up from 120 million and all that it's, um, it's 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 challenging now this shows us i did this to just quickly show us africa this is africa 
in terms of a nominal GDP. Africa is here at the end of the ladder. This is GNI, you know, uh, national income, GNI. You see South, South Africa, Africa is still on the low. India is even higher. This is GDP per capita. You can see it's flat on the bottom. And so this is the challenge. This is a recent a publication on Human Development Index. You see a lot of African countries are going back. They are, they are really going down. Um, and one of the factors are due to climate change and then COVID. So our HDI is going back. So development is rather retrogressing on the continent. Poverty, you know, Africa is increasing. Sadly, 2021, while um, most other places are reducing, um, Africa is increasing. While the number in countries in Southern Africa rose from 417 million to 458 million, an increase in global share from 37% to 66% of poor people, people living in extreme poverty. So increasingly, the continent is under stress. Uh, this is industrialization. Africa remains the world least industrialized uh, region. Um, it's, 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 um, and then it, it continues, you know, um, we are, Africa economies rely too heavily on raw material commodity. I'm trying to pull this to show us why the continent is asking for just what sometimes you want to ask yourself is the just justified in terms of uh, infrastructure. Africa is also relatively uh, very poor infrastructurally. Um, the infrastructure gap challenges aggravated problems of unemployment, low productivity, and poverty. You, you know, um, studies have shown that Africa is losing, you know, you know, 30 to 40 percent you know, because of its poor infrastructure. And that um, in many parts of Africa, reduced national economic growth by 2% every year and cut business activity as much as 40% because of poor infrastructure. And we all know this, you know, these are all part of the story, 630 million people without access to electricity, more than 700 million people in Africa living access to improved um, you know, sanitation and over 300 million people in Africa do not have access to safe and clean drinking water. And then a study that Africa, you know, loses 5% of its GDP annually because of lack of water. This is why just these are internet, you know, connectivity, households. You can see Africa household internet is relatively poor. Internet users by region, Africa is just 25 um it, it's there's a lot on and of course this is the kaleidoscope of african infrastructure old and outdated um one area i want to show us look at the per capita electricity africa is at the bottom 591 uh, kilowatt hour um and then um, unfortunately why southern africa is home to about more than 15 percent world population region only accounts for 4.3 of the global energy demand and less than 1.75 of world electricity consumption. Um, I put this to show us the relationship between GDP and energy consumption globally, 1965, 1991. So this is very clear. If Africa is poor in energy, of course, uh, um, illiteracy, Africa is 67.4 below global average of 86.3. Um, you see Latin America, you see Southeast Asia. So it is amazing. Africa has. Um, eight out of the 10 countries with lowest literacy um, rates on, on, on the globe. Out of school children, a recent study recently just came out this year, about 244 million children are out of school. Africa has 40% of it, so 40% of that. Um, it's amazing. Nigeria is leading the continent with about 20 million children out of school. Um, and this is unemployment. Uh, unemployment is also very sad. Most of Africans are informal employment um though there are about 10 to 12 million people but only 3 million formal jobs so africa is also heavily underemployed medical you know africa is so poor medically um globally 50 percent of children under five who die of pneumonia diarrhea and then um are in africa are in africa and southern africa is only one to five percent of the intensive care units per capita compared to Europe and even East Asia. Tuberculosis and Africa accounts for 94% of all malaria deaths, while mother and child deaths are fourfold higher than in other regions. 
and the visa sustainability africa continent is 830 million people are stressed of which nearly 90 percent of them in south southern africa it's um the level of undernourished is also worrisome food stress mega cities natural disaster uh, africa southern africa is second region most impacted by natural disasters and then we have this of all the trade africa only trade 18 percent compared to its other regions then energy transition now i needed to do that very briefly to show the argument for just energy transition um this i, I like to show this picture to show from the 15th century to the 21st century um my prof here calls it energy addition uh professor jenka calls it energy addition because you can see uh the 15th century at the bottom line then another energy is added another energy is added another energy is added another energy is added but what is energy transition um one thing that i have also agreed is that honestly regardless the world have to fight 24 7 to take away fossil fuel because i did this from uh, the 70th edition of uh, bp statistics and you can see this is a percentage of uh, petrol in global energy mix everybody is uh, you can see the number ratio so it's going to be a nightmare taking out fossil fuel because the global economy is actually sitting on fossil fuel um so there's going to be a lot of technology to that is also where africa has to really work hard because everybody relies on whether you like it or not the industry as we have today is sitting on fossil fuel and to take fossil fuel out reduce it will be um something that we have to we have to worry um um energy transition is defined as a pathway towards transformation of global energy sector from fossil fuel based to zero carbon by the second half of the century um uh, but um you know um there are two schools that argue fast energy i had a professor talk about fast but i think um africa cannot go with fast i'm going to show a few slides to show why africa cannot be on the first school sustainable energy transition group is a gradual progressive logical change to ensure that everything that has to do with energy is incorporated in the transition uh, the current energy transition is driven primarily to arrest rising global temperature and then of course the climate change and because of the greenhouse gas others are because of efficiency in terms of power generation thermodynamics engineering and science but this one is because the world is is dying and then uh, caused by a people that uh, created a problem this is the greenhouse gas you know that we have i won't bore you with all of that a uh, carbon dioxide methane which is short-lived it doesn't stay so long but it has far more potency than carbon dioxide in the atmosphere nitrous oxide and then uh, the uh, the tropophosic uh, ozone uh, gas then we have the emission scopes what we know mostly um that people are talking mostly is the scope one emission which is the direct generation and then there's the scope two which is indirect directly but the one that will really put pressure and i see this the one that will really put pressure on africa is the one that is scope three where you are the producer but the users have to account it back to you to pay for the damage you are causing in their country so before I, I i see this regardless that is why the just energy transition argument have to even leverage on scope three because regardless of whether africa is producing or not somebody in australia who buy africa gas and african oil will charge africa for polluting its country even though it's using it and that is the scope three emission so it's going to be really an argument on just energy transition and these are the, this is of all the emission energy contributes significant portion agriculture and then industry waste we can see the significant portion of the energy now i want to show you this this slide here this shows cumulative emission and you can see all of the world emission are generated by since 1750 
by the developed economies, Europe, America, uh, European Union, the USA. You can see Africa doesn't even feature. Asia is just coming up because of the growth in China and all that. So these are the people that cause all the problem. And then uh, we are the people paying for it. I showed this quickly by income group. You can see that um, energy emission is correlated to income group. And uh, here on the bottom one, you can see where our continent Africa is. It, it really did it by region, Africa shouldn't really pay for anything on emission. And that's also one of the things that African countries are pushing forward. You cause all the dirty works, we suffer all of it, and you are telling us to stop, we won't stop. And these are all the impacts, fire, glacier, drought, and all that. And then of course, studies, medical challenges, miscarriages, all kinds of sicknesses that come with you know the global climatic change will also report that millions of pregnant women deliver premature babies due to air pollution with most of these children growing up with lifelong respiratory conditions because of all of this problem caused by the developed economies pathway zero emission is very challenging the idea is that you should not add new emission but you should manage what is uh, what is uh, so there's another term energy transition implies a shift away from fossil fuel the term low carbon transition is intended to suggest a focus on the overall lowering of greenhouse gas emission from energy sectors independent of fuel so it is very important scientific models have shown that emission must fall between 25 50 through 2030 to limit warming levels um it's going to be a challenge now these are what the developed economies are are putting as their pathways. Shut down anything fossil fuel, don't invest in it, reduce all of the, you know, but we can't do that as Africa. Um, Irina is uh, also supporting all of this, is demanding that uh, the world will require drastic reduction. These are all people. So I, I'm, I'm suggesting Africa needs to have its own equivalent of all of these bodies so that we can sit face to face not pleading with them, but also establish our argument because if the people that cause the pollution are now asking you not to develop and placing constraints on you. Now, I also show you, there's a study that I like to put 2021 in a university study that look at Africa is going to under, I mean, 50% of African reserves have to stay in the ground if we have to achieve that. And because all the money comes from the developed economies, these are banks and many more are adding not to fund fossil fuel. So you can see these ones that are going and a lot of more institutions. Are, now you have this. These are all the challenges you have. A lot of global funding institutions are removing and imposing environmental, social and governance principle ESG so that everything you do will comply to so my argument, which I'm actually proffering to the continent, is that Africa needs to have equivalent of all these uh, global institutions because they will never listen to you. They will press it on you. Money is going to go. Like I said, you have uh, the ESG, environmental governance. A lot of groups are pulling money out of the, the, the this thing. And then here, the Russian, this is changing the dynamics of the transition because the Russian war is making Europe to think twice and which is one of the prospects for Africa. Uh, coal is coming in gradually just to keep them in the, in the, in the winter that is coming. Um, they are looking for more gas. Um, I show this to quickly let you know that Europe is now a dependent, energy dependent. Uh, that is why Europe is going to force people to transition because they are going to make a lot of investment in renewables because there's what is energy sufficiency and energy security. You know, energy is no longer, you can see Russia is fighting two wars, it's fighting Ukraine with gun, it's fighting the world with energy. So you cannot be a country, a nation, a region, and if you don't have energy security, which is a geopolitical tool now, Russia is doing a good job, and I see Europe fighting heavily to make sure they have not only sufficiency but security uh, but until then we'll see that is why they are supporting the gas as a transition fuel um and their focus uh, in the prof shared this 
a similar pictures, why gas is a transition. You can see biomass from the high end, uh, oil and coal, gas is transiting to this. So it's going to take time. And these, all these ones may not be able to support the global economy. Gas would, gas can. And so someone was asking, why is gas a transition fuel without this uh, carbon footprint? Please, the answer is this. All of these ones that you see, I still think they need to be worked on to sustain the global economy. Net zero gas. Um, it, 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 it's, 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 this is a recent uh, uh, conference in the US. There is deep doubt if renewable as it is now can sustain the global economy. So, of course, the challenges with intermittency of a wind and solar cannot support the big industry. So, it's not going to be something that people want to work. Now, I quickly talk about impacts. Africa, two major problems are drought and flood. And Africa is going to lose a lot um, of this, not caused by us, caused by them. You can see the temperature rise in Africa is even more than the global average by 0 0.3 degrees. You understand? So it's, um, and then Africa is experiencing more, you know, spikes. We're experiencing more spikes, drier conditions. This is Lake Chad. You see Lake Chad, it has shrunk by 90%. So very soon, that is why we have all kinds of crises in that region. People have been displaced. See how, how the lake chart is. Its total surface area has shrunk by 90% from 25,000 square kilometer in 1960 to only 1,350. Uh, sea level rise, farming, drought in West Africa, fires in North Africa. And then there has been a study to show that um, African GDP will collapse, except something is done because the, it is going to be a, 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 a trauma for the continent, that they are going to lose a lot of its capacity because of the energy crisis. So just energy transition, it has to be just because it must involve everybody. It must be fair. And this argument shows that we did not cause the pollution. And so we should not be made to pay for the pollution. Now, uh, the prof, said which i also agreed and i subscribe to it that just seven key actors are involved you know seven key actors are involved to a successful implementation trade unions you know nice business political leaders state regional government civil organization energy consumers but sadly nigerian plan i also had a query on it in a work i did it's not a plan that involves everybody so they are missing all of these uh, key players, stakeholders to formulate a just energy transition for the country. Um, these are arguments in favor of Africa that low and middle income countries are building aggressively to achieve the standard of living you know, for their people to aspire, and they should be. Many countries in Europe are not fill the atmosphere with carbon to achieve prosperity. And it is both unrealistic and unfair to expect everyone else to forego a more comfortable life because that carbon turned out to be a problem. Energy transition in Africa must enable economic, urban, demographic growth, not just decarbonization as the African continent. So we can, this is what is just. The just transition is not what they want. Um, think globally, act regionally. Um, the timeline for net zero emission, you know, it cannot be the same time that they are doing it. We can't really work in that time. The, um, you know, thus net zero as a global concept cannot be imposed on the continent. And that is why we also have the loss and damage group that came up in uh, 2009, about 48 African countries. Uh, even the U.S. Secretary General is supporting that Africa should be compensated. The world should fund. The question is, what timeline is viable for Africa? What technology options are best? And based on those results, what type of infrastructure should be prioritized for funding and which policies should be pursued? The argument is vulnerable countries like Africa cannot fund the transition. And so there's a climate vulnerable forum. Ghana is presently the chairman, about 48 countries 
including Asia, Africa, Latin America, are now putting, they are going to put pressure in COP27 in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Egypt to fight for a just and equitable transition. Prospects for the continent. I did this to show us that this is the time Africa should connect to Europe, not through the Mediterranean Sea and with the migrants, but with a pipeline. Nigeria is doing a great job. Egypt, I see uh, Tanzania, Mozambique, though they're having challenges, but this is the time Africa should supply Europe. And um, the Morocco pipeline, the Trans-Sahara uh, pipeline through Algeria, Nigeria to Europe, it's quite expensive. The time is actually, you know, very far, but it's something Africa must work on because there is a lot of prospects and Africa needs to come together. Now, in the unlikely event that these guys say they're not gonna buy your refined products, Africa is quite deficit. We can become refinery hub. There are new technologies now for refineries that can actually do net zero. Petrochemical is not going away. The renewables technologies are not advanced to replace the product of petrochemicals. Advanced countries are even far more than Africa. So Africa also needs to start looking at how do we lead ourselves, how do we support in petrochemicals? And then climate technologies, what I said, adopt, adapt, and domesticate. There are about 10 different technologies and Africa is actually going to really, this is where the universities come in, this is where the technology, you know, ops coming. This is where the government, Africa needs to domesticate this stuff because I fear that if they have the money, they have the technology, and they have the political power, Africa will be recolonized under climate change. And then uh, they will do all that they will do. So the time is now for everybody to say, we need to adopt this technology. China did it. Taiwan did it. Everybody do it. Africa focus adapt it, domesticate it, and make it your own. Then one other good news is that Africa has a vast opportunity because of its, all these renewables, EVs and all that, they depend on rare earth minerals and you know metals, and Africa can actually be a hub. But Africa is not coordinated. You know, there is a mineral exporting you know, market and all, Africa is not coordinated. Africa need to coordinate itself Instead of allowing China and everybody to come here, we need to organize ourselves to make a big trade out of this mineral market and supply. African countries to develop own growth strategy to anchor African mining vision, to optimize benefit from battery and electric vehicle value chain, and all that we can do it if we really want to. ACTA, I said, should be an effective rallying point for boosting deeper collaboration to save, develop, and grow the continent. Africa must walk the talk. You see everybody here. I hope we all come together to fight the just transition. And then sustainable goals. All of these should make Africa focus because we have been tagged on sustainable continent. We have seen all of the challenges. And then uh, my recommendation is we need to pay more attention. And then, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time.